QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Enter billable time and expense and invoice. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice Fire. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. Going to the view drop down, noting that we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial, PL, profit and loss with the changing of the range in 010123 to 123. Let's customize it and fonts and numbers, changing it to, let's say 14. Okay, just to be the same that we've done before. Okay, yes, and okay. Reports drop down again, company and financial this time, balance sheet. Customize it with a range and changing. 01023 to 123123, and fonts, numbers, change 12, 13, 14, 14, 14. We decided on that before. So that's what we have. That's the setup process that we do every time. Let's go back to the home page. We're now going to be thinking about entering time into some kind of job cost type of system so that we can use that time in order to create an invoice. Now note that when we have this enter time item down below, it's in the employees area. So we get a feeling like this is a required field for the entering of time to process the payroll. That's not necessarily the case because for example, we might have employees who are salaried employees, so we don't have to enter the hours at all, or we might have some other system that they're tracking their hours. They might just give us their hours on a weekly basis with, a, with an Excel sheet or something like that or we might have an external uh, thing that's gonna be tracking their time that we'll use to then populate into our pay employees when we process the payroll weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly or whatever. Uh, we're, we're gonna use the enter time sheet, which is often useful to create the invoice. So that would happen oftentimes when we have some kind of job cost system. Usually when we think of a job cost system, we're thinking of like a construction company because we might be thinking about those longer term types of jobs for a construction company, but also service companies that are just providing services often have a job cost system. So if you're in a, a law firm or a CPA firm or a bookkeeping firm, often are structured where you have some partners, then you've got staff. The staff is going to be working on the jobs. And if you ever, I see that, what's that movie where you're the devil's advocate or something like that, where he's a lawyer and the guy tells him, I don't care if you're even thinking about a client when you're in a taxi or something, you've got to have it billable. It's got to be a billable thing, right? So there's pressure to bill the clients for a particular job. So we set up in a prior presentation, the concept of jobs. So if I go to the customer center, which you can do here, or go to the customer dropdown and customer center up top. We have our customers. These of course are gonna be the people that we are gonna be collecting hopefully money from at the end of the revenue cycle. But if we have a job cost type of system where we're providing something that's not standardized and or takes a longer amount of time to provide a custom service or goods to somebody, then we might have a customer and then create jobs for that customer because we might have multiple jobs. If we're doing uh, custom contracting, we might have multiple, a deck that we're creating, a fence that we're creating over here, a different property where we're making something else some other place. And we wanna track those as different jobs, even though it's for the same customer. If we're doing a job cost system in a service company like bookkeeping or like a law firm, let's say like a, a law firm might have different uh, components of what legal things they're dealing with. We got, Jones guitars might get sued all the time. This guy's just a sue, sue person magnet. And so he's got multiple lawsuits or whatever that are, we're gonna record in jobs and try to track those jobs separately, for example. And every time the staff has some work that they do for that particular customer, they want to assign it not only to Jones guitars, but also to the particular job that they are working on. If it's a bookkeeping firm or CPA firm, we might be doing Jones guitars and we might have a, a job set up for them to do bookkeeping and taxes and, and whatnot, other kind of things. Although, note, we might also just simply build Jones guitars for the multiple things we do for Jones guitars. 
which could be divided out by the items that we're setting up. If I go to the lists drop down and we go to the items list, we've got our, our list of items that of course we might be uh, doing and the items will be driving, you know, how we're gonna populate say the uh, invoice. So let's go to the homepage and imagine we're gonna be entering the time for some of our staff. We've got two employees that we have set up. We've got our jobs set up. Now we're gonna imagine that we're gonna enter the time into the system so that it can then be used to create an invoice to bill the client for the work done. I'm gonna add it on a weekly timesheet so we could we could activate QuickBooks time. So you can we won't get into to turning on time tracking up here. So you can look into that. It's kind of a more specialized area in and of itself. That's another option you can look into if this is something that would be very useful to you specifically. You got used weekly timesheet, time entry, single activity. I'm gonna use a weekly timesheet. And so we're gonna enter the weekly timesheet. I'm gonna say this is for first Erica, Erica Smith, who is, uh, uh, would you like to set up an employee to use time data during paycheck creation? I don't want to, to use their time here for the payroll. I just wanna use it for the invoicing. So I'm gonna say no for this one. If you, if you did want to use it for payroll and invoicing, you can do that. Note that when we invoice the client, we might have different rates, might have higher rates than what we pay the employees. That would kind of make sense, right? They might be, we might tell our, our employees or our staff that we, they have to enter their timesheet for whatever time they worked. And we want at least a certain amount of their time billable uh, to the clients. And then we might pay them an hourly rate or maybe not we pay them salary possibly and then we're going to be charging the customer some rate that's not necessarily related to their hourly rate right so i'm going to say this is going to go for the customer job which is going to be 3005 i'm going to say which is uh jones guitars and then we've got the customer of 3005 or the job of 3005 the service item now we could pick up the service items that we actually did. So if it was a bookkeeping company, we could say whatever we did for that particular customer. So in that case, we might have just Jones and then we might say that we did bookkeeping for them, we did taxes for them, or we did whatever other job and the service item would then be driving the billable item for that particular person. Or we might try to charge by person. We might say, I have different levels of staff member perhaps and I'm trying to say, well, this is my best person. I'm gonna, ch if, if he's working or she's working on your job, I'm gonna charge you a higher rate. I'm gonna charge you by the rate of the person that's on the job. And I'm gonna try to assign the, the people to the jobs that are, that, that are suited to the rate that I'm charging for them. That's what I'm gonna imagine we're doing here. I'm gonna set up a new item and we're gonna say it's a service item. And I'm gonna say that the item is just gonna be Erica's rate, Erica rate. This is not the rate we pay her. This is not payroll. This is the rate we charge for her for the jobs that she's working on. So we're gonna say that that is $100, let's say, and the tax code, no tax on it, because we're gonna say it's a service item that represents a sales tax code. And then I'm gonna take it to a, a revenue account and this is a different kind of revenue because we're charging. So maybe I could put it just into the service. Eh, let's put it just into service revenue. We'll put it into service revenue. And then I'll say, okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna say that she worked on Friday, uh, eight hours on that. I'm gonna say it's billable. It's billable by default because we set, we checked off that it would be billable by default in uh, the preferences. When we set up the preferences, edit, preferences and we set up our items which are down way down here under time and expenses company preferences we said that we want to mark all time entries as billable as the default right so then we have it billable item here and then the next one i'm going to say is smith guitars and let's say it's it's job number 4002 so notice it puts the name and then 4002 this is going to be erica's time that we're gonna be billing out on it. And I'm gonna say that happened on Saturday. Now note that if, if they worked on the same job here on Monday and Sunday, then I don't need another line item to record it because I can just record it here. But if they worked on different jobs, that's of course when you're gonna need different line items. 
So you might say, well, why don't I just enter the time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on one row, for example. You could do that if they worked on one job the whole time or if you're not entering the jobs because it's not billable time. Otherwise, you're gonna have to have a new column or a new row, I mean, every time there's a new thing uh, that was worked on. That's the general idea. So we're just gonna keep it now so there's 16 hours. That means when we create an invoice for Jones Guitars or Smith for the job of 3005 or 4002, QuickBooks is gonna ask us due to it being billable if we wanna pull in that billable time. So let's just look at that now, I'll say save and close. So we can imagine for having our, our staff, our employees do that periodically, possibly weekly, possibly monthly. And then at the end of each month, possibly, we would then go into our invoice up top and say, now I'm gonna bill for the prior month of activity for my bookkeeping or CPA firm. We could then go into 3005, for example, tab, and QuickBooks is saying, hey, do you want to select these billable items? As we saw in the pop-up before when we connected the invoice or uh, the invoice to the, to the billable item for the inventory that we processed through. And then I'm gonna say it's billable, so I'm gonna say, okay. And so now we've got our options up top. This time is usually the first one, so there it is. If we had other items like expenses, mileage items, we saw items before, we can go through and select those if they were there as well. We're gonna pick just this one. And then if we go through, I'm gonna put the date at 1.30.23. Invoice number populates automatically, net terms. And there we have the item that we set up, eight pulled in from the time entry, $100 at the rate for $800 total. There's gonna be no tax in terms of sales tax because it's a service item. This then will increase accounts receivable and the other side will go to the revenue account assigned by the invoice. So if I save and close that, then I can see on the balance sheet, if I go into the balance sheet, accounts receivable should go up by the $800. There it is there. The other side go into the income statement, closing this out, income statement or profit and loss, goes into the service revenue and there's the $800. So closing that out. Also note when I entered the time, when I went down here and said use weekly time and type in say Erica, I just used the default date, which is currently this week here. So you might want to go in here and basically adjust uh, the date range. If you're working in real time, it'll be the, the current date, but just keep that in mind as well. Okay, I'm gonna close this back out. Before invoicing the second job, we're gonna add another billable item. We're gonna do so with the writing of the check. Note, you can use the write check form or the enter bills form to do this kind of billable item. So when we saw the entering of the time, we're thinking about possibly staff or our own time that we then want to use to be populating the invoice. This time we're thinking about expenses that we are expending for. So if we're working on a particular job, we might have had auto expenses. We might have bought supplies and so on. As we purchase those items with a check form or a bill form, we might mark it off as billable so that we can then use those items to populate the invoice and charge the client for them. Now there's a little bit more of a trick with this billable item. It's a little not quite as uh, effective because usually it's the items that drive the invoice that we have here or the creation of the sales receipts. So when we use a billable thing and don't have an item assigned to it, it causes a bit of a problem. Let's see what that looks like here. So we're gonna say, all right, let's say, let's say we're writing a check as of 01-30-23 to Office Depot. Office Depot, check, and we're gonna say this, notice it memorized the last transaction, which went to furniture and fixture, but this time we're only buying 160 and it's gonna be going to supplies. So I'm gonna type in supplies, office supplies, and expense account. And then I'm gonna say I bought these office supplies specifically for a job that I'm doing for job 4002 for Smith Guitars. So now I wanna make it billable. I'm gonna click it off as billable. So it's still a check. It's still gonna decrease the checking account. The other side's gonna to go to office expenses, but by assigning a customer here and making it billable, that's gonna link it to the invoice. So when I create the invoice, it's gonna ask me if I wanna feed in or pull in this item of the 130. That's great, I love that, but there's a problem in that this billable thing isn't really an item. So QuickBooks doesn't really know which, which account 
it should be hitting with it. And if we don't make any changes, it might actually decrease the supplies account. Let me show you that in the edit dropdown in the preferences. And if we go back down to the time and tracking, I'm gonna to go to the company preferences. And I believe when we went through this, we ticked off this item that says track reimbursed expenses as income. I do not believe that's ticked off by a default. I think it's off by default, which means that it's going to make a reimbursement of the expense. So let's first take a look at what happens when we leave it there. I'm gonna say, okay. All right, and then I'm gonna say, save it and close it. So save and close this item and uh, there it is if I go to the if I go to the balance sheet now double click on the checking account we've got this item from Office Depot for 130 there that looks good and then the other side is going to go to the profit and loss for the supplies double clicking on the supplies I should have changed the memo it kept the memo uh, in there but I'm going to say double click on this item let's say couch let's get rid of the couch that's disturbing me but there it is i'll say save and close okay and now let's say we're going to go back to our home page here and say i want to bill now for both the time that has been entered as well as this uh, check that was entered for that particular job that we made billable so if i do that i'm going to say create invoice and we're going to say this is 4002 the job tab it says, hey, there's billable items. I'm paraphrasing. I'm going to say, okay, that's great. We've got the time. So I'm going to check off the time. That should pull in uh, great because we have the, the item that's going to pull in. We also have the expenses here. I'm going to check that one. There's the office expenses. I'm going to say, okay. And then we've got the 930 that we're going to charge the customer. Now note, as we pull in this, this second item, we, we probably would want to pull in a description and whatnot of what you know what we have here this would be supplies that we purchased for example as we populate it but it's nice that it pulled in uh, that information we also could uh, have a markup when we pull this information in in our edit preferences down here we might want to say as we pull that in we want a default markup that's what we paid for it maybe we mark up each line item 30 percent or something like that and mark that to a, a markup account or we might just say i'm going to take the full billable items that we have here and mark it up to you know whatever the markup is meaning you might put this at cost and then have another line which would be your markup your profits you're making but that's that's it the problem with this is it's going to increase the accounts receivable by the 930 then this one's going to go to the proper income account but i believe this one is going to be a reimbursement of the expense decreasing the expense instead of going to revenue that's generally a problem that's usually not what we want to do let's save it and close it and check it out and so i'm not going to invoice this so let's save it and close it if we go to the balance sheet double click on the accounts receivable we've got the 930 there that looks good and then i'm going to close this out and I'm gonna go into the profit and loss. And then we've got the revenue up top in the service revenue. There's the service revenue of the $800. That looks good. The other 100 and the other amount is not in here of the 130, closing that out. And I believe they put that down here into the office supplies, netting it out against the office supplies. That's not normally what we want to do if I close this back out because usually you're doing this for taxes and usually what you want to say even though you used the office supplies to bill the client your net income then should take into consideration the fact of the office supplies but normally you want to show the revenue uh, as the total up top even though you had expenses right and then show the expenses it should be revenue minus expenses we shouldn't have negative expense accounts typically so that's that's going to be part of the problem now we can we can adjust the setting on that a few different ways we can try to set up items uh, or we can have we can say we want to assign the expense accounts to an income account so one way you can deal with that i'm going to go back to the home page and we're going to try this again and we'll write another check and do this process again. One way you could deal with that, you can go to the edit dropdown, you can go to preferences, you can go to the time and expenses and company preferences, and you could say, I want to uh, track reimbursed expenses as income, 
but that still gets you some limitations because it's gonna assign it to one income account. But that's probably the easiest thing to do and you wanna make sure that you are aware of that, test it out so that you, that you are uh, assigning it to an income account and not a reimbursed expense account because that can cause kind of problems. So that's one thing you can do. I'm gonna say, okay. The next thing you can do is use items. So if you can actually get an item in there being lists, the chart of accounts, I mean the item list, if we can use an item, then we have control over which income account we want to put in place. So this takes a little bit more to do the data input, but it gives you a little bit more control. So we could say, okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna use items this time. So I'm gonna tab through this. I'm gonna say this happened on 130, that's fine. We'll say this is for Office Depot. And we're gonna say this time it was for the amount of, let's say 200 this time. And then down here, I'm not gonna put it into the supplies but instead i'm going to try to create an item for it so i'm going to go to the items tab which is usually used with inventory i'm going to create a new item new item up top and i'm going to say it's a non-inventory part let's say and i'm going to say that the item name i'm going to call it office supplies just to give an idea of what we can do i'm going to say that this is the key component i'm going to say this item is used and assemblies, when I do that, it gives me that two-sided component, which is generally used when we have inventory parts that we're tracking the inventory. And that allows me to assign a cost item over here, as well as a sales price, because we have two sides to the transaction. We're entering here on the check side. This is when I want it to be hitting an expense account, not cost of goods sold, because it's not inventory, but rather supplies or office supplies. And then I'm not gonna put an amount up top because the amount could change, so I'll keep that at zero. I don't need a preferred vendor because I might use this for multiple different vendors. And then I can call it here on the description, office supplies, which is great because that'll populate in my description down here. And it'll also populate on the sales side when I make the invoice, giving me some more control on what's gonna be showing on the invoice. I'm not gonna put a sales price because it will be dependent on what we put in for the cost. I'm gonna say it's non-taxable because it's a service item not subject to taxation. The income account, now I can assign whatever income account I want to assign it to. I'm just gonna choose service revenue here, but notice how you have now control over whatever you wanna be putting it onto an income account. So I'm gonna say, okay. And so there we have it. And then I'm gonna say the amount is uh, two, we'll say, 200 you have changed the cost for certain do you want to update no i don't want to update the cost quantity i'll just say one 200 and then it's going to go to customer customer 3005 3005 and so now i can pull that in i'm going to make it billable now which should still give me the reference or the or the pop-up saying hey you got a billable item so this is going to do the same thing it's just a check it's, but the check is now be driven by an item. So the check means it's gonna decrease the checking account and then it's gonna be in the items area because we needed the item to help me pull it over when I pull it over into the invoice. It's gonna be office supplies is the item. The item is telling QuickBooks to expense it because we're on the expense side of things under the account of office supplies. So I'll save it and close it. And so if I go back to the, to the balance sheet, double click on the checking account, we should have the 200 decreasing the office supplies, I mean the checking account, and the other side go into the P&L profit and loss for office supplies again, there's the 200. Now we're gonna bill for that one and see if it does what we want, charging it to an income account, not an ex decrease to an expense account and allowing us to assign which account we're gonna hit with it. So this is gonna be for the job number 3005 tab. It's saying, hey, you've got this item. I'm gonna say, okay, that's great. Notice the item is not under the expenses here this time because we did it, we, drew, we used an item, which is usually an inventory item, but we use the items in order to, to give us more control over basically the expenses that we're pulling over to here now. So I'm gonna say, okay, so there is our item. So now we're gonna say this happened on 130, we'll keep that. There it is, the item is now in place. And now that second half of the item told is gonna to tell us what income account it wants to go to. And that's gonna be our service revenue. 
so it's non-taxable driven by the item. This is going to increase accounts receivable, the other side going to the income account as opposed to a decrease in the expense account. Let's save it and close it and check it out. Again, I'm not emailing it. I'm not emailing it. This is a practice problem. Balance sheet up top. We can double check on, double click on the accounts receivable. And this time we've got the 3005 for the 200. There it is. The other side then going to the whole, the profit and loss. And it went into, we drove it to the service item and there's the 200 as opposed to it being a negative expense. So the moral of the story here is that the billable th component can be quite useful, but you still wanna use the items when you can if you want more control. When you enter the time, you typically have an item that you're gonna be putting in place with the time, which could be an item driven by, that's, that's geared to the, the actual individual's time that you're charging, how much you charge for that individual's time, or to the thing that you're doing invoicing for taxes versus bookkeeping. But when you enter the expenses that are billable here, when you actually pay for something that you want to then include on the invoice in some way, you can turn on the billable items here, but you want to be very careful to make sure that you have it the way you want it. You can you could try to have it go to an income account by changing the settings, but then you still don't have as much control over which income account. And then you could use this items uh, method which gives you a, a bit more control to pull it over to the accounts that you want. The items are the things that are going to give you a bit more control generally. All right, let's go to the reports drop down, go to the accounting and taxes trial balance and just see where we are, see where we stand. 010123 to 123. Let's customize it and fonts and numbers and pick it on up to 16. We could check our numbers here. If everything lines up, great. If not, change the date range. See if it's a date issue. If it is, then you can drill down on the data to figure it out. And we'll be looking at, at the end of the month, which is coming up shortly, the transaction detail report to hone down on any other issues that might be present.